I call the member for Oxley. Thank you very much, Mr Assistant Speaker. I thank uh, the House for your courtesy in indulging me to present my final speech. And I start by referring to Robert Frost and his famous poem, The Road Not Taken. If my nine-year-old self had been heading off this year on school holidays with my brother and parents to Orcania for a spot of fox shooting, I would not be standing here. When our family did exactly that in 1977, we couldn't, uh, there was a big east coast low, there was floods, rain everywhere, and we couldn't get through the Cobb Highway. It was impossible. We turned east instead for a life-changing holiday to the mid-north coast of Grassy Head on the New South Wales mid-north coast. This year, my pledge as Roads Minister to have that road sealed was completed. If that road was sealed in 1977, we wouldn't have taken the other road. 37 years later, I became the member for Oxley, which encompasses Grassy Head, one of the prettiest places on the planet. How do I condense 20 years into 20 minutes? Is it a minute per year? How can I possibly thank all those that have been part of this incredible journey? First, I must thank the grassroots of the Nationals for the extraordinary opportunities you have afforded me. A party that first touched my life when I was a pram, well, in a pram on federal election day at the Merrigan Town Hall booth when Black Jack McEwen spoke to my parents. And in the chamber today, Rod Gillette and his family, whose parents' farm at Stanhope, shared a boundary on Black Jack's soldier settlement farm. It sort of like just got in the blood. As I said in my inaugural speech in the other place in 2002, we are so often a product of our upbringing. My parents with me in the gallery today, and no silver spoon, they were definitely stainless steel, from share farmers to farm owners who constantly told me and my brother, Kenton, watching from a boat somewhere in Queensland, we are so often, uh, he, he, they said, our success was up to us. Mum and Dad were always country party people, and it rubbed off. We are the party of small business, of farmers, of nurses, with a great tradition and history. And if we continue to take our direction from our local communities, our future will continue to be assured. So many of my colleagues across all sides in recent weeks have been coming up to me saying, who have you lined up to replace yourself, Mel? Well, I encourage, whilst I was encouraged to run uh, for the upper house by our former great leaders, Wal Murray and Ian, and Ian Armstrong, and former party chairman, Patrick Ma, who joins us today, I had to get the support of the delegates of Central Council. That was up to me. Similarly, it was up to the candidates that stood for Oxley to convince the delegates. Fortunately, this is how the National Party works at its best and how our pre-selection worked. And for politics across the country, I think that's how it needs to be. No factions, no deals, no back scratching, rewarding intelligence, hard work and commitment. I did encourage several local women to consider nominating, but I couldn't get any of them to the line, unfortunately. Uh, but as Jamie Parker, uh, uh, you know, talked about last week, I do hope that the, with the future of technology that we adopted during the COVID crisis, we can use that to spend more time in our electorates and still be here in the same place at the same time. In the end, it came down to two candidates. It was between a friend who has been an important part of my team, Les Wells, who was born and raised in the Hastings Valley and still has a very big future in our party, and Michael Kemp, a sixth generation Kempsey local, who is a farmer, a physiotherapist, served our nation in the Air Force in active tours of duty and can still run five kilometres in a rather tidy 20 minutes. I encouraged him to join the party because I liked, I liked him, and he did. But the decision was for the almost 100 members of our branches that stacked the Maxwell RSL Club, as it was for me in 2015. Those fiercely intelligent and sensible locals take no truck with intervention from any outsiders. And with the hard work, I expect the people of Oxley will endorse Michael's candidature so he can join the new generation of very talented NAT MPs, like the member for Upper Hunter, like the member for Monero, and our candidates from Mile Lakes, Clarence, Barwon and Murray. And Mark Taylor, I'm sad to say, no longer will you be the tallest man in this chamber. <laughs> But to my party stalwarts of, the men of 30 years, many of you are here today. My friend of more than 30 years, Janine Reid, and her husband, Barry, 
The Ramkeys, the Irvines, the Butlers, the Ushers, the Hurrells, Peg Parbury, David Scott, the Lanes, Heather Connell, Norma Daly, the Doyles, John and Nolene Simons, Noel Atkins, the biggest thank you from the bottom of my heart. My most favourite job in the past 20 years has actually been being the member for Oxley. The people are the most down-to-earth, honest, hard-working people you could ever meet. To my electorate team, Jody Griffith, Susan Ramke, Ben Farrell, Holly Gavis and Alice Burnett and David Dawson, you've assisted and aided these four valleys on my behalf. And, what, uh, and it's been a pretty brutal four years, a very brutal four years, with, uh, with drought, fire, flood and COVID. But in the end, it's because this government has managed well. We've been part of an incredible team over the past 12 years. Our region has grown and prospered over the past decade, despite the natural disasters. Former member for Oxley and Nationals leader and Deputy Premier Andrew Stoner deserves much acknowledgement for his help in fixing the state's books, which has flowed through to all country electorates. You lot like to call it pork barrelling. We just call it catching up. New hospitals at Maxville and Kempsey and massive investments in sporting facilities and all our showgrounds, town halls, libraries, roads and bridges. A special shout out to my four local councils, to the mayors, especially Liz Campbell, who I served with with many years, Rhonda Hoban, one of the most sensible, down to earth, honest mayors you'll ever come across, uh, Peter Pinson doing an incredible job and the newly elected Steve Allen. I made it my, my, my business to work really closely with our councils. We have much to learn and do to improve and we can work together to do that. One project I want to, to, uh, to raise here today that uh, is still to be completed in Oxley and we're just about to go out to tender, $6.5 million federal contribution. After listening to the, to the community and people like Mark Morrison who is in the chamber today, our most vulnerable kids need a safe haven with a kitchen that's accessible 24 hours. That is what we are going to build with this federal funding and it's also going to need state support and I know I've got Natasha's support, I've got Natalie's support and Bronnie's support. But we need to have somewhere where kids can go to get a feed and be safe. I also thank Mark Morrison for his insistence we need safe long-term accommodation for the mums still attending school. We also achieved that. I will add that Mick Cussell, my, um, my CEO, demanded that I sign a stat deck that I didn't know the developer of the units that we bought, um, but that was fine because that's all appropriate and it's all proper, but we now have seven young women at school and their families across the road at Maclay Vocational College. David Gillespie, you're here today. It's been an absolute pleasure working alongside with you on the North Coast, as long, uh, along with Cowper MP, Pat Conahan. We fought hard to bring benefits uh, of the alignment of our governments to pay dividends to the people of the Mid-North Coast. I leave knowing there are challenges and opportunities within the electorate. We need to expedite the approval process of the Oven Mountain Pumped Hydro Project in the Maclay Valley. Adam Marshall and I uh, joined at the hip on that project. Uh, it's going to bring enormous dividends as part of the renewable energy zone and also the benefit of a better road between Kempsey and Armidale. I'm immensely proud of the work we did for rural and regional health as parliamentary secretary for four years alongside Gillian Skinner, who's also here today. We developed a blueprint for country health delivery that is being acted on. Thank you, Tom Callahor, who just happens to now be my nephew-in-law, and Shane Kruger for being part of that journey. We needed a minister for regional health to push that agenda, and thank you, Bronnie Taylor. Uh, for being at the forefront for pharmacists to actually pick up the slack that we need because we don't have the medical professionals that we need to live in our communities. Also working alongside the likes of Lindsay Kane from Royal Far West, we ensured multi-million dollar investment in that property at Manly on the waterfront, making sure kids get intensive treatment as well as their families. Uh, and also putting uh, services back out into the bush with uh, the development of the Healthy Kids bus stop and telehealth taking care directly to the bush where medical professionals at times simply don't exist. I also know the work I did in opposition as Shadow Emergency Services Minister with Mike Gallagher was really important to now we have doubling the amount of hazard reduction than we did before we came into government. But I've got to tell you there's still more to do on that front. I will always be grateful to John Barillaro, who gave me the opportunity to serve for five years in the New South Wales Ministry. It was the most challenging yet rewarding professional experience of my life. The respected public servants I worked with, thank you, some of you are watching. 
You know who you are, and for fear of diminishing your careers, I won't name you. I can mention Ken Konofsky and Jim Bentley, as they are outside the service now. There has always been tension about the bureaucracy's agenda and the minister's agenda, but we're always more successful when I use the real and lived experiences of my constituents. I recall the first piece of advice I ignored from a certain deputy secretary, who is no longer in the service, who suggested I fold my ministerial advisory committees, committees that work directly alongside business, unions, industry, all together at the table. Bringing subject, ex subject experts together with the public service is the most effective way of making good and timely decisions. Our team was able to push through so much work as we brought all parties together to simply do good. And what are the highlights? I mean, the dual carriageway of the Pacific Highway, the Nationals have been fighting for that for over 30 years. It's been delivered in our term of government. A uh, billion of dollars of funding to local councils to help replace timber bridges uh, and roads, a record number of social and affordable housing constructed. Thank you, Premier Dom Perrottet, for that COVID stimulus funding. Rezoning and planned rebuilding of the Tolland Estate in Wagga and Albury and Coffs Harbour, reimagining public housing estates, and Anthony Roberts doing well continuing that work. Kick-starting Aboriginal land use agreements. Thanks to the leadership of Anne Dennis, Chair of New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, the Orange Land Council and Orange Council, all claims in that community were settled. That ensured the sporting fields could be constructed and there's at least 80 hectares of valuable land now in the ownership of the Land Council. That's the way it's got to be done into the future. I also pushed for Aboriginal tenants to buy their homes. Coastal harvesting ensuring that farmers on the eastern side of the divide could get a fair share of the rainfall as it fell. All really important things that we were able to achieve working together. But one of my most favourite uh, days in the job was this time last year at Menindi. We weren't welcome in Menindi a couple of years back. We went to talk to the local community to tell them New South Wales wouldn't follow the orders of the MDBA and go and will full, and, uh, because they didn't want the projects the MDBA were pushing. My friend Senator Davey, also here, and member for Aubrey, joined me on the tour. It was quite the turnaround in community sentiment. We spent a lot of time talking with the locals like Graham McNabb. I was yarning with some of the aunties and they said, why don't you take your boots off, Minister, and take a walk in the lake, which was absolutely full to brimming. I said, mm, I hesitated. Then one of the aunties, I said, but I did it. And she said, one of the aunties said, no wonder you're a bit shy about it. Look at the size of your feet. <laughs> I explained that's the joy of warming your feet in cow manure when I was a kid on the dairy farm. World's best fertiliser. Yeah. On a trip to Israel uh, to learn more about recycling and desalination, we signed a memorandum of understanding with the Israeli government. My secretary, Jim Bentley, inquired why the government was building six desalination units. Without missing a beat, the Israeli Minister for Water said they need to keep the Red Sea topped up just in case Jesus comes back. <laughs> the past week has seen 13.3 metre record in, uh, of, uh, of, of flood waters going through Forbes, with enormous fears over coming days um, that that record will be broken with, I think, 253 gigalitres ferociously flowing over Warragamba Dam in the past 24 hours, a record. Three years ago, I took the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder to task for irresponsibly releasing 22 gigalitres of water from the same dam, leaving only 10% at the start of summer, with no break in the drought expected. Climate change is going to make our weather less predictable. Raising Wyangla Dam could have saved the stress and flooding, some of the stress and flooding in recent months, and even greater water security as we head toward the next inevitable drought. Tamworth, Simile, Dungowan Dam. We need to get on with these projects with the face of climate change as it is to give our securities, uh, to give our communities strength and security. We need this infrastructure desperately. In October 2020, I received this text. Dr Passion is being granted an exemption to leave Melbourne. He will fly to Armidale this afternoon around 5 p.m. So I will take our girls up to Armidale in our truck where Rob will set up his lab and commence flushing them to retrieve the embryos about a seven hour procedure. None of this would have happened without your assistance. We would have lost all the embryos. This is something I will never forget. Of course we are talking about cattle. Uh, 
some of the best cattle in Australia that ensured for the first time in the history of the Angus breed it was the most, the highest value mating ever. And who do we have to actually really thank? Thank you, Brad Hazard. During everything you were going through, you saved those heifers. But I do recall Brad texting me to check they weren't my cattle. <laughs> I absolutely assured him the only animal I have is Jasper, the Lakeland Terrier, who is definitely neutered. And I can't believe I got my favourite child into my valedictory speech because he hasn't left home. <laughs> On a more sombre note, I was contacted by a Bellingen family during the COVID crises who needed to travel to West Australia to say goodbye to their beautiful daughter who had had a fatal medical episode and was on life support. I was able to contact the government, the opposition and the media in Western Australia with a simple plea, let the family be beside her to say goodbye. Incidentally, that girl attended the same high school, Coffs Jetty, as the West Australian Premier, Mark McGowan. On the 29th of October last year, I received this text. I saw the TV story last night and it made a big difference. All the family will get to be with Madison today as they turn the life support off. Truly grateful from all the family. That's the power of our office and being a strong, accessible local MP. My team in my office did a particularly great job during COVID. We kept our office open and Alice Burnett, a former medical professional, who ensured everyone on the Mid-North Coast got timely, accurate information through my Facebook account. In fact, people stopped me today and thanked me for our COVID information during that time. But COVID has also created, on a large scale, the greatest opportunity for our regional communities. The ability to use technology and live and work from where we want to. The uplifting opportunity to live your best life in our country and coastal towns, free of big city pressures, is well and truly being realised. And that is a fundamental core belief of the Nationals. We must and we will work through those challenges in terms of housing supply. But if there is an uplift, it is the opportunity to live your best life in the best locations. I'd like to acknowledge the committee staff of the parliament I've worked across both chambers with and appreciate how our committee system can improve public policy outcomes. It creates a strong alignment for our citizens and organisations to directly interact with members of parliament to create better understanding, consensus and solutions. They are a very undervalued cog in the wheel of our democracy. In fact, I've served on 20 committees, but the one that was most illuminating was the Select Committee on the Regulation of Brothels. <laughs> it was a real comfort, wasn't it, girls, to the women on the committee when we were told by a brothel owner that we'd go all right if things didn't work out in politics. <laughs> We'd go all right. Um, the juxtaposition of seeing Jo Halen, who just had a baby, breastfeeding in a, in a brothel in Darlinghurst. Um, and I've, I've got to call you out, member for Kuringai. You turning up to Melbourne and St Kilda brothels in a trench coat is something I will never forget. <laughs> but I've got to say, the most confronting sight was walking into that St Kilda brothel and seeing Mike Baird. <laughs> on Sky Television. <laughs> to all our parliamentary staff, the clerks I've worked with, John Evans, Lynn Lovelock, David Blunt, Russell Grove and Helen Minikin, thank you for your stewardship of this, the most wonderful, oldest, most brilliant parliament in Australia. Yeah. Uh, and to everyone that works within, Hansard, Catering, Love Catering, love to get behind that coffee machine. Um, but we've also got two special people here um, that I just want to acknowledge that were attendants in the other place. My, my very good friend, Bunjalung Mayan, John Ferguson, and Lucy Smith, originally of, um, of Maxwell, who's now retired. You were always there to help my mother and baby Emily in those first few months. Thank you. So there's a few fun bits here. Linda Voltz, your organising skills are beyond compare. Herding cats is much easier than organising pollies for netball games across the world. Um, and Emily, thank you for coming along for the ride. For a basketball, you make a brilliant netballer. Um, you know, sport does make strange bedfellows. Um, I know this will be hard to believe, but the member for Murray and I played very well together. <laughs> On the court, anyway. To Kieran, Ricky, Alan, Blake and Larry McNally, thanks for the Sunday morning ch um, chats heard across the state on the 2SM fishing show. The only contributor who doesn't fish but certainly likes to eat them. 
Um, to our parliamentary friends of Surf Life Saving, um, Adam Crouch and Yasmin Caitley, it's been a privilege and I just acknowledge that there are a lot of IRB boats out there in Western New South Wales helping those freshwater people get to school and get food, etc. Um, to those that worked on the Spring Ball Committee, it's been incredible. Um, that was a lot of fun and we raised tens of thousands of dollars for charities right across Australia. Um, to my team through the past 20 years, you've been simply incredible warriors for good country people and this state. For the most part, they will always be part of Team Pavey. Emma Watts, Rowena Gilbertson, Verity Lermack, Sean O'Connell and, uh, and Anne Lewis in the Upper House. The ministerial crew led by two loyal chiefs of staff, Ed Martin and Doug Walter, along with Polly Bennett, Alicia Silvestro, Les Wells, Angus Mackey, Jaden Waits, who gave the best policy advice and ensured the voice of common sense and country people were er in every brief and recommendation. The media crew, Jessica Cole, Imogen Poser, Lance Northey and David Dickerson. It was never easy between droughts and then floods, dam building, horror road crashes and a record infrastructure spend and a boss that thought she knew as much about the media as you did. To Diane Pavey, my friend, who also happens to be my sister-in-law, thank you for your kindness and company over the past 20 years. To be able to leave this place for a second home has been a godsend. Likewise, thank you Heidi and Jason for our regular home cooked meals, another home away from home. To my sister from another mother, Margie Osman, you helped dress me in a style I couldn't afford. Our <laughs> lifelong friendship and connection through our greatest mentor, Bryce, will continue. You've moved on to Zimmerman, but Carla will always be my favourite. Even in, the even in the best of times, it's hard to find a close confidant in this place, never mind the dark days of opposition. Jeff Provost, I will always call you a mate, and it was such a joy when you helped swell our ranks in 2007. 100% it was. <laughs> My friendships with Catherine Cusack and Andrew Constance were cemented in those days of opposition as we fought to win government, and their help in Port Macquarie and Monero were essential to our victory in 2012. Whilst we don't always see to eye to eye, we're always joined in our ambition for good government and respect for the taxpayer. As I reflect on my contribution, there is no greater legacy than our children. Jack and Emily, I am so proud of you and the directions you are taking in your life and what great kids you have always been. Jack, you are serving our country in uncertain times, heading to Townsville to head up your 30-member platoon as part of 1RAR. Thanks to the daily guiding hand of your father, the love and support of your grandparents and aunties and uncles, I could not have done what I've done without the unswerving, loyal support of Warren. You are my rock, my confidant, my stabiliser and my truth serum. You have always put us before you. I look forward to our next chapter, which will mean more time for us and you. The decision to leave has not been easy, but there is a fork in the road and this new direction, which won't be to Macquarie Street, will be shaped by all I have learnt and experienced in this building over the past 20 years. I will be forever grateful for the things I have been able to do and the opportunities you have given me and the people we have brought to the table to make change. What an honour it has been to serve the people of New South Wales and Oxley from this magnificent parliament. I thank you for the privilege, especially you, Tom Chesson, look at you up there. We've been working now together for 30 or so years. It has been an honour and a privilege. Be assured, my intention is that this road not yet travelled, will be sealed, will be straight, <laughs> will be pothole free and very, very long with many more opportunities to contribute to come. <laughs>